Next, in just a couple minutes, we'll have Coach Mike Houston from ECU on the line. We'll have a minute. We'll quickly uh, run through the rest of our weekly awards. We mentioned the players of the week on offense: Dylan Gabriel of UCF, uh, Malcolm Perry of Navy. Uh, defensive player of the week is uh, Harrison Hand of Temple, and special teams player of the week is Adam Williams, Memphis punter. Our five-man honor roll consists of uh, Cincinnati running back Michael Warren II, uh, Memphis linebacker Austin Hall, uh, USF quarterback Jordan McLeod, SMU running back TJ McDaniel, and uh, Temple wide receiver Jaden Blue. So this morning uh, we did uh, we've already announced our, our game times uh, in television for games of September 28th. Previously announced uh, already had been Cincinnati at Marshall at 5 p.m. Uh, on CBS Sports Network on Facebook, um, ECU at Old Dominion at 6 p.m. on ESPN Plus, and Houston, North Texas, 8 p.m. Uh, CBS Sports Network on Facebook. Uh, announced today uh, was Georgia Tech at Temple, 3.30 p.m. on CBS Sports Network. Uh, SMU at USF will be at 4 p.m. on ESPNU, and then UConn at U UCF will be at 7 p.m. on ESPN2. So those are for games of Saturday, September 28th. You're joined now by Coach Mike Houston of ECU. Pirates are 1-2 and two overall, 0-1 in the American. Uh, we're in action this past Saturday at Navy. Navy won the game 42-10. to 10. Uh, ECU returns home this Saturday to face William & Mary at Dowdy Franklin Stadium in Greenville via 6 p.m. Eastern time start on ESPN3. Uh, Coach, thank you for joining us this morning. If we just get your thoughts on the, uh, the conference opener at Navy, please, and we expect to see you return home on Saturday to face William & Mary. Well, obviously, uh, we're disappointed with uh, not being able to get a win this past weekend uh, at Navy. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, that Navy, uh, you know, coming off of a little bit of a down year last year, um, you know, they'd had the one game in the opener against Holy Cross and in a couple of weeks to get ready for our game. Um, I thought they looked vastly improved over what I saw on film from last year. Um, but they played really, really well on Saturday. And I think, uh, you know, uh, Coach Nehemiah uh, had the same uh, thoughts in his post-game presser, but uh, you know it's, uh, it's a tough way to start the league play. Uh, but at the same time, it's the, kind of the next step in uh, in the progression of our program uh, with uh, you know where we're trying to go, and uh, we obviously have to improve uh, to the point where we're much more competitive uh, against a team like that. So we're excited uh, to be back at home this weekend in Daddy Ficklin Stadium. Uh, taking on a quality CAA uh, opponent uh, in William and Mary, you know they had a big win last week against Colgate, 38 to 10. New coaching staff there at William and Mary, um, and they have a uh, a veteran roster uh, and a very talented roster, and it should be a great matchup. We'll open up to questions for Coach Mike Houston, please. Star one on the, your, your telephone keypad, and then the operator will introduce you. <clears throat> We have a question from John O'Connor with Richmond Times Dispatch. Morning, Coach Houston. I wonder if two games in you could assess uh, your redevelopment project down in Greenville. How's it going so far in your view? Well, we're we're three games in right now, but uh, you know there's a there's a reason the job uh, was open. Um, obviously, it is a uh, a rebuild situation. Um, and uh, you know I'm excited about uh, the opportunities here because I think that the the future is very bright, and uh, I think that there this is a place we can build something special. But uh, we're very much on the uh, early stages uh, of that rebuild being in the first year. Hey, if I could follow up by asking if this one uh, resembles Lenore Ryan, or resembles the Citadel, uh, maybe not so much JMU. Uh, how do you feel about that in terms of? Uh, getting the program back together? I think it very much resembles probably mostly Lenore Ryan, um, you know, with, with where things are right now, uh, based on where things were when we got there. Uh, maybe a little bit the Citadel, but I think it's very accurate to say this is a different situation than, uh, you know, what uh, we came into there at JMU. Appreciate that. Good luck. Sure thing. Sure thing. Good talking to you. Back at you. Next, we'll hear from Roddy Woodward with the Greenville Daily Reflector. 
Hey, Coach, just wondering, uh, with Darius Penix's injury, if you have any more details as far as was he battling that in the first two games, or is it something that, that maybe happened after the, the Gardner-Webb game? It happened during the Gardner-Webb game. Okay. Um, and is it a, a leg issue or a shoulder or neck? Do you know kind of where, it, where what exactly it is at this point? I don't. Uh, I don't think we really need to get into specifics, just that, uh, you know, right now he's working on, uh, you know, getting himself healed up and ready to return to play. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Next we'll hear from Tom Shanahan with News and Observer. Hi, Coach. Uh, you know, Malcolm Perry is such a dynamic player. The triple option was new to your kids. I kind of thought he would break some big plays. But I thought you guys might score more. You maybe have some new concerns about your offense that you didn't have earlier in the year. Well, you know, I, I think definitely we did not play um, the way we want to play on Saturday, uh, and uh, you know, part of that's a credit to uh, you know the the Navy, Navy players and coaches and the job that they did. Um, you know, we've got to be more effective in driving the football, uh, and we've got to get the ball in the end zone. And uh, those are obvious statements uh, that I just made, but uh, I don't think any of us are pleased uh, with how we played offensively on Saturday. Okay, thanks, Coach. Thanks. Next, we'll hear from Dan Totora with WakeUpCallDT.com. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for asking. Uh, just to assess these these first few games with Holton at quarterback, just what you've seen from him, and you know what you're seeing when you go back and, and look at the film as the team steps forward into your upcoming upcoming game. Well, I think you know Holton, uh, much like our team, is uh, young and developing, uh, and uh, you know certainly he uh, has a lot of potential, and uh, he's driven to be uh, a great player. You know he he wants to be good. Uh, he works very hard at it, uh, and he is continuing to improve week to week. And uh, I think you'll see him. Uh, I think you'll see him get better as the season goes on. And then, as far as the rushing attack goes, just what you can say about you know maybe uh, working in that room a, a little bit more, seeing maybe some of the things that in the first few games that have stuck out to you. Is there someone that's that you can lean on a little bit? Are you seeing some leadership emerge from the backfield, or just what you can say about that? Well, I think that uh, you know certainly it's uh, something that's important to me, uh, philosophy-wise. Um, uh, I don't know how much it was important to the previous staff, uh, so it's 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 a place where we will really work to develop that room. Um, you know, I thought Darius had a nice start to the year, but uh, obviously we did not have him last week, and so uh, we had some younger players getting some opportunities right there. And I think that in time, you know, they're going to be just fine. Uh, it's just uh, you know we've got to bring them along. Thank you, Coach, and good luck this week. Thanks. Steven Igo with 24-7 Sports has our next question. Hey, Coach, was just curious, given the nature of Navy's offense, from a defensive perspective, is this one of those films you kind of just move on, or are there still things to break down from a, a fundamental perspective going forward as far as what to get better on? Well, and that's you know, that's the thing with that style of offense is you know when I, I talked to the players yesterday before we watched the film and I told them, you know, certainly uh, once we finish the film yesterday, you kind of put that one on the shelf until the off season, uh, and we're going to need to spend a lot of time during the off season evaluating, um, you know, how they attacked us. Um, but uh, as far as you know, what we took from that game and what I, I really. Um, you know, encourage the defensive players to evaluate themselves was, you know, are they doing the things that they're coached to do? Uh, are they aligned correctly? You know, how is their effort? You know, they're giving great effort on every play. And then are they competing, which is different than giving great effort. Giving great effort is a minimum expectation. Competing means are they making the play that they have to make in order for us to be successful? Um, you know, are they are they are they making the the combative breaking up the pass, or are they, are they making the tackle uh, that is there for them to make uh, within the scheme of the play? Uh, and so, those are the things that we really looked to evaluate uh, individually and collectively from that film Saturday uh, to use uh, moving forward into this week. 
Okay, thank you, Coach. Thanks. Dave Johnson with the Daily Press has our next question. Hi, Mike. Um, as you mentioned earlier, uh, William & Mary has a lot of veteran players, but also a lot of guys you probably haven't seen before. Uh, looking at them on film, how different do they look and what they're doing this year than, than in the years past? Quite a bit. Um, I think that uh, you know most of those defensive guys we've played against for several years there at JMU, uh, you know, most of them have been starters for, um, you know, two, three years, uh, and have been very good players for them. Um, so, you know, it does not surprise me that they're playing well on that side of the football. Um, you know, I think offensively, uh, you know, it's a different scheme than what they've, uh, played there in the past. And certainly I feel like, uh, you know, the quarterback 12, uh, Mathis, I think he's a guy that's going to be a special player in that league. You know, he, he throws the ball very, very well. Uh, he is, uh, you know, very shifty and explosive in the run game. And I think he creates a wrinkle uh, that they have not had. You know, really that's the thing the last two years that I felt like was something that held back their program was, you know, they didn't have the, you know, the playmaker there at that position. Uh, and certainly I think he gives them that. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have time for one more for Coach Houston, please. Our question will come from Christopher Heidel with Herb FM Sports Radio, Baltimore. Hi, Coach Houston. How you doing? Pretty good. Um, Condolence to you and your family for your uh, loss of your father. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you very much. Um, talk about playing against William Mary. You were in you know, JMU every you know, last three years. Just talk about that whole rivalry with the state of with the Commonwealth of Virginia and what does it mean for you to play against Mike London, who basically you know, has been around the CAA a lot. Right. Well, you know, certainly while I was at JMU, uh, William and Mary was a big ball game for our program. Uh, it's a that's a big rivalry game. You know, them, them and Richmond are probably the two games that uh, you know were the biggest uh, biggest games for our fan base and our players. Uh, so it's a game that always you know had your attention. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, Coach Laycock did just an incredible job there for so long. Uh, and those teams were always highly competitive and always, uh, you know, came at you with everything they had. So, uh, you know, Coach London, I've known him uh, for several years. Uh, he certainly knows uh, the CAA very well from his time at Richmond. Uh, and I think he, he's a great hire there at William & Mary. And I think that he's obviously made uh, an instant impact uh, positively uh, with that program uh, from what I've seen on film here early in the year. So, um, you know, I think it's. I think the William and Mary faithful will be very happy with uh, the way that team will progress under his leadership, and uh, you know, it should be a, a, a you know a very highly competitive game this this coming Saturday, and one that we're excited about playing in. Thanks, Coach. Good luck this week. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate your time as always this morning. We look forward to hearing from you once again next Monday.